from the Wigwam in Phoenix, Arizona. It's the Cube covering Data Platforms 2017. Brought to you by Cubeball. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are down at the historic Wigwam, 99 years young, just outside of Phoenix, Arizona, at Data Platforms 2017. It's really talking about a new approach to big data in cloud, put on by uh, Quobol, about 200 people. Very interesting conversations this morning, and we're really excited to have Karthik uh, Ramasamy. He is the co-founder of Streamlio, which is still in stealth mode, according to his LinkedIn profile, so we won't talk about that, but longtime Twitter, guy and really shared some great lessons this morning about things that you guys learned uh, while growing Twitter, so welcome. Thank you, thanks for having me. Absolutely, mm -hmm. so one of the key um, parts of your whole talk was this concept of real time, and mm -hmm. I always joke with people, real time is in time to do something about it, and, and you went through a bunch of examples of, you know, real time is really a variable mm -hmm. depending on what the right application is, but, but at Twitter, real time was super, super important. Yes, it is indeed important because the nature of the streaming data, the nature of the Twitter data is streaming data because the tweets are coming are coming at a high velocity and uh, Twitter positioned itself as a more of a real-time delivery company right. because uh, that way what happens is uh, whatever the information that we get within Twitter, we need to have a strong time budget before we can deliver it to people so that people kind of when they consume the information, the information is live, all right. real time, right? But the real time too is becoming, obviously for Twitter, but for a lot of big enterprises, right? It's more and more important, and, and, and the great analogy I've heard before is we used to sample data, his, used to sample historic data to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Now you want to keep all the data in real time to make decisions, so it's a very different way yes, to, very to drive your decision making process. Very different way of thinking, and uh, especially considering the fact, as you said, the enterprises are getting into understanding what real time means for them. And, uh, but if you look at some of the traditional enterprise like financial, they understand the value of real time. Similarly, the upcoming new use cases like IOT, they understand the value of real time, like autonomous vehicles where they have to make quick decisions. Healthcare, you got to make quick decisions because uh, the preventive and the predictive maintenance is very important in those kind of segments, right? So bec because of those segments, it's uh, getting really popular. And uh, traditional enterprises like retail and all, they are also valuing real time because it allows to uh, blend in into the user behavior so that they can recommend products and other things in real time so that people can react to it. So that uh, it's, it's becoming more and more important, that's what I would say. Yep. So um, Hadoop started out as mostly batch infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And um, Twitter was a pioneer in a design pattern to accommodate both batch and near real time. Um, how has that uh, big data infrastructure evolved so that one, you don't have to split batch in real time, and what should we expect going forward to make that platform stronger in terms of you know, near real time analytics and potentially so that it can inform decisions in systems of record. Yes, so the, I think like uh, the, uh, today as of now, there are two different infrastructures. One is, uh, in general, is a Hadoop infrastructure. Other one is more of a real-time infrastructure at this point. And uh, the Hadoop is uh, kind of uh, uh, considered as is monolithic, or not monolithic, it's a kind of a mega store, where all every data, like, all like similar to all the rivers, uh, kind of reach the sea it kind of uh, becomes a storage C where you, all the data comes and stores there, right? But uh, before the data comes and stores there, a lot of uh, analytics, a lot of uh, visibility about the data from the point of its creation, before it ends up there, it's getting done on those uh, river, whatever they call the data river, right? So you could get a lot of analytics done do, during the time before it ends up so that it's more live and the other analytics, right? I mean, Hadoop had its own kind of limitations in terms of, uh, how much data it can handle, how real time the data can be. For example, you can um, kind of dump the data in real time into Hadoop, but until you close the file, you cannot see the data at all, right? So there is a time budget gets into play there. And uh, you, you could do smaller files, like small, small files writing, but the name node will blow up because like within a day, you write million files, the name node is going, not going to sustain that, right? So, so those are the trade-offs. That's one of the reason we have to end up doing a, a near, new real-time infrastructure like uh, the distributed log that allows you to, uh, the moment the data comes in, data is immediately visible within the three to five millisecond 
time frame. And so this the, distributed log you're talking about would be Kafka, um, and and at the the output of that would be to uh, train a model or just score a model, and then would that model essentially be carved off from this big data platform and be integrated within a system of record where it would inform decisions? So th there are multiple things you can do. I mean, uh, first of all, the distributed log, essentially l the data is uh, kind of, uh, st the you can think about it as a data staging environment where the data kind of lands up there. And once it lands up there, when there's a lot of sharing of that same data going on in real time, when several jobs are uh, taking, they're using some popular data source, right? It provides a high fan out in the sense like, uh, like 100 jobs can consume the same data, they can be the different parts of the data itself, right? So that provides a nice sharing environment. Now once the data is around there, now that data is being used for some different kind of analytics, right? And one of them could be a model enhancement because uh, typically in the batch segment, uh, you build the model because you're looking at a lot of data and other things. Then once the model is built, that model is preloaded into the real-time compute environment like Heron, then you look up this model and the serve data based on that model, whatever it tells you. For example, when you do a ad serving, you look up that model and what is our relevant ad for you to click. Then the next aspect is model enhancement because the user's behavior is going to change over a period of time. Now can you capture and incrementally update the model? So that those things are also part of partly done on the real-time aspects rather than recomputing the batch and again and again and again, right? Okay, so it's sort of like a, mm. what's the delta? Yes. Let's train on the delta and mm. let's score on the delta. delta. Yes, and the, once the delta gets updated, then the, when the new uh, the, the, the user behavior comes in, they can look at that uh, new model, what that's being continuously being enhanced, and once that enhancement is kind of captured, you know that the user is, behavior is changing, right? So, and the ads are served accordingly. Okay, so um, now that uh, customers are, are sort of getting serious about moving to the, to the cloud with mm -hmm. their big data platforms and, mm -hmm. and the applications on them, um, have you seen a change in the in this patterns of apps they're looking to build or a change in the um, makeup of the platform that they want to use? So that depends on, I mean, uh, typically like, uh, like uh, one uh, uh, disclosure is I'm not, I worked with the Amazon and all, the AWS, but uh, within the companies that I work for, it's everybody, everything is on-prem. So, but the thing is, uh, having said that, like uh, cloud is nice because it gives you machines on the fly whenever you need to, and it gives a bunch of tools around it where you can bootstrap it and all the various stuff, right? So this works ideal for smaller companies and medium companies. But the big companies, one of the these things that we calculate in terms of the cost-wise, how much is the cost that we have to pay versus uh, doing it in-house. So there's still a huge gap, unless the cloud provider is going to provide a huge discount or whatever for the big companies to move in, right? So that is always a challenge that we get into because uh, think about like if I have uh, 10 or 20,000 nodes of Hadoop, can I move all of them into Amazon AWS? How much I'm going to pay, right? as well as the cost of maintaining the, my own data centers and everything. It's, I mean, I would say like, uh, I don't know the latest pricing and other things, but approximately it comes to 3X in terms of uh, cost-wise, right? If you're using... Our own uh, on-prem and the data center and all the staffing and everything, there's a difference of, uh, I would say, 3X in For on-prem being higher? On-prem being lower. Lower? Yes. Oh, and, but that assumes then that you've got flat utilization, that mm -hmm. you're... I mean, okay. flat utilization, but uh, I mean, uh, I mean, cloud, of course, has the uh, expands out of scale and all the various things that you can. Uh, it right. gives the illusion yeah. of uh, unlimited resources. But uh, in our case, if you are provisioning so much machines, in, uh, most of the at least 50 or 60 percent of the machines are used for production, but the rest of them are used for staging, development, and all the various other environments. So, which means like. Uh, the cost of the total cost of those machines, even though like only 50 percent utilized, still you end up saving so much. Like one, uh, our, operate out one third of the cost, and it might be in the cloud. All right, Karthik, that opens up a whole can of uh, interesting yeah, conversations yeah. that we can't. We just don't have time to jump sure. into. So I'll give you the last word. Yeah. When can we expect you to come out of stealth, or is that uh, stealthy too? It's kind of uh, it's, it, that is stealthy. Okay, too. fair Not enough. Right I now. didn't <laughs> want to put you on the spot, but uh, thanks for stopping by and, uh, and sharing your story. Thanks, thanks for having me. All right, me. he's Karthik. He's George. I'm Jeff. You're watching the Cube. We're in the Wigwam Resort in just outside of Phoenix at Data Platforms 2017. We'll be back after this short break. Thanks for watching. <laughs>